Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jen and today we're gonna walk through how to do a quick DIY herb garden that's a perfect gift for something like Mother's Day. I tried to give this gift to my twin sister this past weekend for our birthday, but she couldn't fit it in her car. So I'm gonna have to deliver it the next time I go down there. But I just got thinking about how this would be such a great gift, an easy gift to give for anyone who's looking for a Mother's Day gift out there. I know Mother's Day is coming up in the next couple weeks, so let's get into it. First things first, let's talk about the supplies you're gonna need for the job. The first thing you need is a big container, one that has a big enough diameter on the top to support lots of herbs. So we're gonna do a big variety today. Next, you're gonna need some potting soil. You can just pick up a couple bags that fit your container from your local Lowe's or Home Depot or your local nursery. There's organic options and non-organic options, whichever you prefer, but I recommend choosing a potting soil so that it has the proper drainage needed for a container. Next, I recommend getting a nitrogen fertilizer. This is blood meal right here. We always harvest and eat the greens from herbs and so they really benefit from a nitrogen fertilizer. Something like blood meal is slow release, it's organic, so it should help fuel those herbs for months. Next, let's talk about watering. In my opinion, gifts are much better if they're all inclusive. For example, don't give them an herb garden where they have to go and figure out a watering solution. It's a better gift, in my opinion, if you figure out the watering solution for them. Something like a watering ala or a terracotta watering steak with an upside down wine bottle would be great for this because it's totally portable. It's easy for them to use. All they're gonna have to do is fill this up probably once a week, maybe once every five days or so. Um, and it's all contained in one container. Next, you're gonna need starts for various herbs. Um, I've got a planter that I kind of want to rearrange in my garden. So this has my rosemary plant that I'm looking to remove and place in here. I've got chives, thyme, and oregano. I have parsley and cilantro in other parts of my garden right now that I plan to remove during the course of this video um, because I'm going to reconfigure and move those raised beds and I actually want to get those herbs out of there. So. You can just pick up starts at your local nursery or sometimes even grocery stores have like a little potted basil or something that you could use. I recommend going with starts for this versus seeds because it'll give your gift a nice good look right at the very beginning. And then you're gonna need some mulch on the top. This is easy straw mulch that I got from Tractor Supply. This stuff has lasted me forever, but you could probably find a smaller bag of um, some straw mulch and we're gonna to top dress the soil with it after we transplant our herbs, and that's gonna help the soil retain moisture. Okay, let's get into the assembly. So first thing, we wanna make sure that our soil is moist. Mine's a little bit moist, but it could use a little more water. So I'm going to water it, but first I'm gonna add, I'm gonna work in like a handful of blood meal into the top half of the soil. You're gonna wanna use gloves for this. Your hands are gonna get really dirty. This stuff is basically a dust, so be careful. Don't do it like in a really windy area. I'm just sprinkling, sprinkling it on top right now. Then I'm gonna mix it up a little with my hands and then add water. The reason we're watering it first is to make sure that you have a good moisture level to start in your container. If you rely immediately on something like the watering ala, it's not gonna get everything quite as wet as you want from the start. And you don't want your soil to dry out. So give it a little head start with some, with some water. And some of this mixing, I, I brought a um, trowel too to help kind of Mix up the soil and check the moisture level just so it's not all, just so I don't have to get my gloves soaking wet. Um, and sometimes a tool. This will definitely come in handy when, it, when I'm transplanting the herbs. And it doesn't have to be completely wet because remember, once we add in those transplants, we will be watering to help the transplant process. So. Uh, just get it a little bit, make sure it's not dry. That's really all we're doing at this step. 
Also, I just realized something really dumb that I just did. You may want to put your herb garden in a more final location than the middle of your backyard because this is going to be heavy at the end. Um, so maybe I should have put it, I don't know, on a chair or something. All right, next we're going to put the watering ala in. This is going to be the center of the herb garden. I love these Grow Oya watering alas. Actually, I'm going to, I'm about to buy a lot more um, because I'm doing, I'm working on a big project to expand my raised beds and I'm going to do self watering on the bottoms and I just think I need some top watering too. So I plan to get some watering alas for that. But I've been so happy with the first four small ones that I bought that um, I'm not going to hesitate to buy more in a larger size for a raised bed. All right, so I've got my watering ala right here. We can go ahead and fill it up, although it doesn't really matter which order you do this in. You could easily wait until the end to fill it up. Make sure you bury it enough. Like you don't want, you want the majority of the watering ala to be under the soil. Um, so I've got the silicone lid on top and I maybe have an inch exposed, which is okay because I plan to cover the top of this soil with mulch. Okay, let's get into transplanting the herbs. This one is oregano. I want to point something out. I think oregano is one of my favorite herbs. Can you see this back here, all the way back here? This vining, here, let me move this, this vining herb coming out of my raised bed. Look at how pretty that looks just climbing over the edge. For this reason, I'm going to put oregano on the edges of the container and let it grow into looking like this. We're going to just plop that start in there. If you guys have enough time to think about these are my own starts that I've had going for a while. So if you have enough time for a gift, you could, instead of buying starts, you could make your own starts um, as a way to save some money. Also, look for, like, there's creative ways where you can get planters and containers um, in a really affordable way. Funny story, this planter right here, actually my neighborhood is really good about, like, people whenever they're cleaning out some part of their house or anything like that, they'll put like free curb alert on Facebook and just put something that they're getting rid of um, that's still in working order like on the curb and let people know. And whenever they do that, stuff is gone. So I got six of these containers for free because my neighbor just didn't want them anymore. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. And you could find something like a, something that you could use for a gift um, really easily and really cheaply. It's the thought that counts in a gift anyway, especially when you're buying for somebody who's tough to buy for or somebody who you feel like has everything they really want. All right, so this is my fourth oregano. It's just so beautiful. We can always cut it back. It's easy to harvest. You just cut it. It's so good on eggs. I just had some chopped fresh oregano on top of a hamburger salad today for lunch and it was good. Now the next, if we think about this in layers, we have oregano on the outside so it's going to create that climbing effect and right behind it I'm gonna put thyme. Thyme is another perennial herb. Oregano, thyme, chives, and rosemary are all perennial herbs which means they should last for a long time in an herb garden, potentially years. Um, if treated properly. And so what we're gonna do is kind of prioritize having some perennial herbs. So you want your gift to last, right? We may have a small section for cilantro at the end because, I mean, you can't have Mexican without cilantro, but it does bolt and it will die. So it's not always as fun to grow. I'm just putting this thyme start right behind the oregano. 
I think it's pretty when herbs are growing and vining all together, so I wouldn't even worry about spacing too far apart or anything. You can always trim them down. Now, if you're doing this for Mother's Day, I recommend doing it sooner rather than later because some of these herbs will experience some transplant shock and they'll wilt, especially like cilantro. Um, if I transplant that here shortly, you'll notice that it just kind of looks like it's dying um, until it bounces back after the transplant. So keep that in mind. You probably want to either give yourself that time between when you put this project together and when you gift it to somebody or just explain that to um, the person you're gifting it to. Right here I think we're going to do a section of chives. I think I might just do a bunch of them right next to each other. I've got four starts of chives. Chives are, they add such a good flavor. I just baked some sourdough bread with rosemary chives and garlic. And it, I do it every week actually, so it turned out really well. It's so good. It's a good like oniony flavor without being an onion. Gonna want to make sure those chives are sticking up. Probably gonna have to pick it up and pat mulch around it when we get to the mulch phase. I'm going to, when it comes to harvesting chives, I think it's kind of fun to just grab them and kind of give it like a haircut all together. So I'm gonna put these chive starts all right next to each other. So somebody theoretically could just grab it and cut it versus, you know, cutting all the way around a container. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is this rosemary. And this is gonna be a little bit of a pain to get out. Now, I'm not too concerned about saving this nasturtium. I have it going in several places in my garden. So if I can save it, great. If not, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna just tip this over and try to... I think that the rosemary probably has really big roots on the bottom. I've transplanted rosemary before and, um, well, see there's roots coming out the bottom of this planter. I think it's probably the rosemary roots. Probably needs to be up potted anyway. Now a little bit of root breakage during this type of process is totally fine. Sometimes it even like rejuvenates the plant. Um, but you know that's one of the reasons why we're adding something like the blood meal. Trying to give it a little bit more. We could give it a root fertilizer too, um, but you know, we're just, give it a little bit of time after something like this. All right, now we see this rosemary with lots of roots. I'm gonna, I don't wanna add too much soil, so I'm going to kind of shake it out. I can see Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is my rosemary start. It's more than a start, this is my rosemary plant. I'm gonna give it a big space in the back of this container. Rosemary has to be one of my favorite herbs to grow. Every time I walk by, I'm like touching it and smelling my hands because it smells so good. And it is so good when you put it on meats, like an herb roasted chicken or um, a grilled steak or even in a sourdough bread like I did today. Rosemary is always a hit. All right, I'm gonna just try to make sure I can cover up all of these roots. Make sure it's nice and secure in there. You're gonna press down. You don't want air pockets and stuff. You want to give the roots a secure place to go. Okay, so now we have oregano, thyme, chives, and rosemary. I'm gonna go over to another section of my garden and pull a plant of parsley and a plant of cilantro, and I'll be right back. So here's the parsley plant that I grabbed out of my raised bed. Your starts will probably be a little bit smaller than this, but uh, this actually was a start from my nursery and then grew pretty quickly in about 
I think it grew this size in about two months, actually. I'm in central Florida, and parsley seems to like the sun and the heat so far, um, but I think it that may change in the heat of the summer. We'll see. I would recommend that this um, container herb garden gets put in a uh, partial shade area or at least something that has shade from the hot afternoon sun. Mine, um, my herbs seem to be doing well in a full sun spot in the raised bed. However, we have a really hot summer coming up and I just think some of them are going to get burnt up or bolt because they won't like the heat. All right, I got the parsley in there. Now I've got a few cilantro ones. I have noticed that cilantro is probably, it seems to be like the least likely to survive transplanting for me. Um, we'll give it a shot. I think I got four or five plants here. Um, so we'll see, maybe some will survive transplanting and some will not. So I'll just plant them right next to each other. But if I do this, today is April 23rd, Mother's Day is May 10th or 11th, I'll have time to, you know, remove the one that doesn't transplant well, the one that, there's going to be at least one that dies. Cilantro is one of those herbs that I so wish I could grow really well because we love to eat it. But it's hard to keep it from bolting in my, um, Central Florida environment. It's just really hot. It bolts a lot. Okay, so we've got all of our herbs in the raised bed right here. Let me turn it around so you can see a little bit more. Here's the cilantro, chives, thyme, oregano, parsley back here, rosemary here. The last step, we're going to add the mulch and then we're going to water. I'm going to water after the mulch because it helps um, the mulch to actually have some water, like to help it hold onto the soil instead of blowing away with the wind. And I actually really like the look of this really light colored pine straw. I think it's a nice contrast with the green herbs. Not that, you know, the looks aren't necessarily the main reason to do it. It's a nice bonus. I'm going to try to make sure that these chives, you know, are not being pushed down by the mulch. So give yourself a little bit of time to spread the mulch around in a way that doesn't suffocate the herbs. So I'm going to go up to my mom's house. She lives about an hour and a half north of me. I'm going to go up there for Mother's Day weekend. Let me know in the comments if you think I should give this to her and record it for you guys. I can make a cute little short about it. You can always come back and add more mulch too. Um, if you find that something got disturbed and the, the mulch, you know, moved away because of heavy rain or something like that. Sometimes it, I'll notice like bare soil spots after a heavy rain. Sometimes it's just a matter of pushing the mulch back around and sometimes you want to add more. All right, now it's time to water it in. I'm going to put it on a light shower. I'm not necessarily trying to um, keep the herbs dry because it's so hot and sunny right now. I think they're just going to evaporate, but I do think it's worth trying to get the soil wet versus the herb. And remember, you're trying to give the mulch um, some wetness also so it doesn't blow away in the wind. That looks good. Let me pick up the camera and show you guys the final product. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Oregano, all right here. Thyme. These are the chives. 
This is the cilantro back here. It's a nice rosemary plant, parsley, and the grow oya watering ala. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you love it.